Hey, are you breaking even on your return on ad spend running Amazon sponsored product ads or even worse, are you losing money? Well, in this video, I'm gonna talk about some of the advanced tactics that my agency, Good Monster, uses to make sure that our clients remain profitable running Amazon sponsored product ads. Let's get into it. Hey everyone, I'm John Timmerman. I cover the world's most exciting brands and marketing trends to make sure you and I can both grow our businesses faster. Today we're talking about Amazon sponsored product ads and how to make sure that you're not losing money, you can keep your A costs down, and at the end of the day, you're profitable. So one of the first things I wanna talk about and the strategies that I wanna talk about is sort of a basic one if you are you know, deep into PPC, whether on Amazon or on Google or other platforms as well, and that is negative keywords. Negative keywords, you've probably heard of it, but it's so, so, so important with Amazon ads because Amazon is such a transactional platform. People go to Amazon, in fact, it's the number one search platform for products. They go to Amazon and they search for products, okay? And a lot of times they know what they want. They know they're looking for a specific thing, so they search it and then they go through and they wanna see which ones has the highest reviews, which one's the good price for me, uh, you know, which one looks like it's a good fit, but it's highly transactional. And so using negative keywords is important to make sure that your ads don't show up for search terms that are not highly transactional. So if you don't know what a negative keyword is, it's basically uh, your target keywords that you wanna show up for and you, you list negative keywords for things that you don't want your ad to show up for, okay? Targeting keywords is a no-brainer. You target things like, let's say you're selling a baby bottle. So you would target baby bottle or best baby bottle or lowest cost baby bottle, cheapest baby bottles, right? You search for something with a baby bottle if you're looking for a baby bottle. But if you as an advertiser are spending money to show up for baby bottles, you wanna make sure that you're not showing up for longer tail keywords that disqualify the baby bottle search. So things like baby bottle accessories, baby bottle cleaners, baby bottle holders. Okay, those people are not looking for baby bottles, they're looking for baby bottle accessories. So you'd wanna add those things in as negative keywords to make sure that your ad doesn't show up. Otherwise, you're possibly wasting money for people who are searching for things that are not specifically what you're offering. So use as many negative keywords as possible to ensure that you're only showing up for highly transactional search terms that are very likely to end up offering your product to somebody that's gonna buy it. Okay, the next advanced strategy is optimize for ranking. Optimize your ads for ranking. So if you've been in Amazon, you know that the A9 algorithm, Amazon's algorithm, looks for sales as one of the most important ranking factors. Organic, right? So Amazon SEO. Unlike other platforms like Google, Amazon SEO relies on sales. Yes, it relies on keywords and your titles and, and, and your listings, it does. But sales is a big, big, big factor because they figure if a lot of people are buying this thing over and over and over again, it must mean it's good. And if there's no complaints and things like that. So you wanna optimize your, your ads for sales. So what does this look like? It means being very specific in running your ads again, going back to my previous advanced tactic, for things that will drive sales. So negative keywords, putting in lots of negative keywords, making sure your keywords are optimized for very specific keywords that you're targeting, you know, uh, and being very conservative. So don't throw a bunch of money at your Amazon ads and think that the algorithm is going to make the best use of it. That might be the case on other platforms, but not on Amazon. So be very conservative. If you have to start out spending $50 per day in running ads, or even lower, if you have to spend lower than that, you know, $15, $20 per day, just to figure out what is driving sales, do it. Be conservative because one, you don't wanna waste money. Remember, we're trying to generate an ROI here. So be very conservative until you find out what is generating sales and then start to trickle more money into that because those sales will tell Amazon's algorithm, the A9 algorithm, that people want this product and it will start to help your ranking go. So be conservative until you get a good ranking, until you get onto the first page of Amazon for your search terms, then you can start to dump more it money in because you've already got the sales, you've already got the organic ranking. So now you can dump more money in to start to test some other keywords and test some other negative keywords and you can be a little bit more liberal with your, uh, your spending. Okay, and another advanced strategy that is still an offshoot from the previous one is to really target long tail keywords before you go general. So I did use the example of baby bottles, right? But if you're just starting out and you target 
baby bottle, number one, you're gonna have to spend a lot of money to compete with the other companies that are uh, running ads for baby bottles because it's such a general popular search term, right? Second thing is, some of these other businesses and sellers are already ranking organically. So it's still gonna be hard for you to, to compete for a generic term like baby bottle when there's probably three or four listings that have 10,000 five-star reviews and are naturally gonna get most of the, the clicks and the sales. So instead, start real long tail. Target things like baby bottles for infants under six months or newborn baby bottles or uh, you know, baby bottles for babies that have a trouble taking a bottle. I mean, it sounds crazy, but start to think about what people would actually search and use your ad platform to, to see what the keyword volume is for those particular uh, search terms, okay? So go long tail because they're gonna be cheaper and they're gonna be easier for you to actually get sales from because you're not gonna have as much competition from the bigger competitors. So start long tail until you start to get the sales, you start to rank, and then you can start to broaden your keyword targeting. The other thing is, as you make sales and you collect five-star reviews because your product is amazing, people are more likely to click on your ad, uh, which shows the actual reviews because you have a lot of good reviews. There's a lot of social proof. The next advanced strategy is not exactly a PPC strategy, but it's still related and a good strategy is to group your variations together if possible. So if you've got a green product and a red product, or you've got a large product and a small product, try to group, group them together because you will get a trickle effect. So if you're running ads for a particular variation or a listing, and it gets good click through because it's got good five-star reviews, the more variations you can group into that listing, the more exposure that you'll get. So if the red item is a top seller, okay, group in green and blue and yellow into those into that listing as possible so that people can see that there are other variations and it might help to boost the sales of all of those variations. And another kind of sub strategy is if you can't group your variations together for whatever reason, um, then at least run ads to your top selling child product listing because you'll get a trickle down effect um, from people clicking on that particular ad, right? So if you run ads to your very specific top selling red item, um, you'll still get the trickle down effect if you have the variations listed on that page as well. Another advanced strategy is to put similarly priced products into the same a campaign. Otherwise, your A cost could be a little bit skewed, right? So if you put a $50 product in with a $5 product, you know, your Amazon cost of sale, which is basically measuring when somebody clicks and makes a pur purchase, how much did that cost in ad spend? You're going to get a lot more people assuming everything else is even, you know, the reviews and everything. They're going to buy the $5 product because the barrier, the cost barrier is a lot lower, but your A cost is going to be skewed because you have a $50 product and you have a $5 product. So try to group your variations together based on price. So five, $10, you know, in there. And a similar strategy is also measure the performance. Okay, so if you are, if you have multiple kind of products in the same campaign, one of them has an A cost that's 50% and one of them has an A cost that's 20%, okay? It's also gonna be skewed because the performance is so much different. Okay, and so the algorithms and the, and the recommendations and your decisions are gonna be sort of all over the map because you have two totally different A costs. So instead, separate them out so that you can optimize your ads for the high A costs separately uh, from optimizing the ads for the low A costs. So split up your uh, similarly priced products into the same campaigns and split up your similar performing products into the same campaigns so that you can better manage your ACOS and your decisions. Another really cool sneaky uh, advanced strategy is to run ads on your top selling product listings for your lower selling product listings. This is called product targeting ads. So you can actually run an ad that will appear on your listing, okay, for your another product. So if somebody happens to find a red item, your red item, and it's a top seller and it gets really good ranking, you can run an ad on that page that's, that displays some of your other products, okay? And you, the hope is that you attract somebody who's looking at the red one, but they're like, oh, I really want a yellow one. Use product targeting ads 
to run an ad for your lower, less demand or less performing pro uh, products to try to get some velocity there and run them on your top selling products, which probably already have a good ranking and good visibility. And a little sub strategy here is you could do the same thing for off Amazon campaigns that you're running. So if you're running ads on uh, Google or somewhere else and you're, you're driving them into your products, uh, listings on Amazon, or you have influencers who are recommending your products on Amazon, when they link to a particular product, whatever that product is, run a product targeting ad on that product because you're already getting all this organic or other paid off Amazon traffic to this listing and you can run a product targeting ad on that listing. So you're, you're tapping into the visibility of this incoming traffic here and you're trying to increase the sales and velocity of this, this other product, right? So you're kind of hitting two birds with one stone here. Okay, those were just a few of our advanced Amazon sponsored product uh, optimization tips. I hope you found them valuable. Send them over to your team and hopefully you can get your ACoS down, your return on ad spend up and really start to drive some revenue from your product targeting ads or your sponsored product ads rather. If you need any more advanced help or you would like any more tips, uh, my agency, Good Monsters, is what we do every day and I'd love to chat with you about it or have somebody on my team chat with you about it. So if you're, having str you're really struggling with Amazon ads or you're having trouble competing, just go over to Google and search thegoodmonster.com. There's our website, fill out a little thing and, uh, and we'd love to jump on a call to see if we're a good fit for you. And you can always just leave a comment or direct message me over on Twitter or something like that, uh, Johnny Timbo over on Twitter. I'd love to help you out. I just love geeking out about marketing stuff. So uh, let me know if this was valuable. Uh, and the best way you can do that is hit the subscribe button. I talk about Amazon and Google and all, all sorts of performance marketing stuff all day, every day. Uh, so hit that subscribe button and we'll see you in the next video.